Hi, I'm Barbara. I'm Art with Miss Barbara, and I am today. I'm going to show you how to make what I call a meditation ball. So you need about one to two pounds of clay. It doesn't have to be exact. Some cornstarch, some a little bit of water, a little bit of vinegar, a toothbrush, old toothbrush, or buy one at the Dollar Tree, a pencil, some rubber stamps. So I'm going to start by taking my clay and just making two. Um, dividing it in half, and then I'm going to squeeze these into two balls. It doesn't have to be perfect, I just need it to be a ball shape. And so there's one, and here's my other one. So now we're going to make a pinch pot. You're going to hold the ball of clay in your non-dominant hand and take your thumb and push it right into the center. Make sure you don't come through the other side. You can kind of feel how thick it is so that you have room. And then you pinch and turn. And you just keep doing that. Pinch and turn. Just squeeze the clay with your thumb inside and your fingers on the outside. And you can switch it up if you have to. You can take your thumb and kind of pull it out from inside a little bit. Oops, I went too far. And just keep pinching and turning until you have a pot doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it doesn't matter because we're gonna put these together and make them a ball. So there's my first pot, that's pretty good. Because this isn't, the end result is not the pinch pot, so it doesn't have to be beautiful. So there's one. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the second one. Thumb in, pinch and turn. Now I'm gonna pinch and turn this until it's about the same size as my other one, as far as the lip, okay? Because we have to stack these together in the end. So I'm gonna make sure that I get it as wide as the bottom or the other one. If that looks pretty good, I'll make it a little bit bigger. And you do not wanna make your pot too thin. You wanna keep the whole pot, the edges and walls about a half an inch thick if you can. If you make it too thin, it's, it's gonna be hard to um, work with and it could crack as it's drying. So I've got my two pots and like I said, they don't have to be gorgeous. This clay is a little wet and um, I'm recycling some so it doesn't look great, but it's fine because it won't hurt anything. I'm gonna dip my toothbrush now and get it nice and sloppy in vinegar and I am gonna scrub making sure I get vinegar. We're using vinegar instead of just water for the attachment because it makes a better attachment. It has a little bit of a chemical reaction that makes the clay stickier. You can use just water if you want to, but you wanna scruff it up. You wanna really scruff up the lead edge of your pot on both of them. Then we're gonna put them together, just like this. I'm gonna squeeze them together so that both lips fit all the way around. Can you see that? Now you see that where they come together, we wanna to get rid of that. So we're gonna take clay from one piece to the other. It doesn't matter which direction you go or whether you go up and down, but you have to go from one pot to the other pot all the way around to get rid of that seam. Okay, my clay is a little bit wet. Yours won't be this wet because you will be using it most likely right out of the package. This is air dry clay, by the way. Um, this is, I usually do these with fired clay, but since this is a home project, not everybody has access to a kiln, so we're making it air dry. And it's a lot easier. You don't have to worry about having air bubbles in the clay, which would explode in the firing and all that. So once I have my, my edges, together and the seam covered. It still looks pretty rough, but that's okay. We're gonna take care of that. The next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna compress it in my hands to round it as more if it needs rounded. And then you can, you know, like roll a meatball, roll your clay. You wanna have like a non-stick surface because the clay, if it's a non-porous surface, it's gonna like stick to it and then you might have some trouble picking it up after it's dried. So I'm just gonna make this 
into a ball and smooth it as much as I can. Like I said, this clay is a little bit wet. So once you get your ball, you can just smooth it out. You're, I don't need any water to smooth these because my clay is really wet. Yours will be drier. If you notice little cracks, you can just dip your finger in the water and smooth them out like that. If it starts to, uh, if it keeps making cracks, I'm not having any, but if it makes like wider cracks and it keeps doing that, it might be there's too much pressure inside. So you'll take like a toothpick and just punch your hole, a slight hole to let some of the pressure, some of the air out that's trapped inside so that it will not keep cracking. Okay, so I have my ball. Now, if your ball is very wet, you're gonna wanna wait before this next step. Like mine is really too wet to do this, but I can still show you because I can always come back later and fix it. So I have my ball nice and round and I've smoothed it with my hand. So the next step would be to write or decorate. You can use rubber stamps. I have some letter stamps here because I use these to put um, either inspirational messages or healing messages. It's a good thing um, to express what's going on. I have these, I have a lot of these balls. I have big ones and small ones and I make them for celebration, for healing, for grief. I make them with um, the names of loved ones that have passed on and then they're always sitting there as a reminder. I put them on little tripods that you can get at the seashell store or you can also get them on a, online. Um, they're the little carved, one piece carved into a tripod. So I am going to now uh, start to write on my ball. I can't find all the letters that I was gonna write. I was gonna write namaste. I think I might have them. Okay, so when you're using the rubber stamps, you wanna dip your stamp in a little bit of cornstarch, but you also wanna pounce it off because you don't wanna clog the space in between the letter. We wanna make sure that the letter shows. And then you're just gonna press into the ball any, whatever you wanna write, whatever would be meaningful to you that would help if you saw it daily or to hold when you meditate. These are good to hold in your hands to meditate because just feeling the weight of that clay and that ball in your hand kind of keeps you focused. And also if what you want to meditate or pray about has something to do with the message on the ball, then you have it right there to look down at. I'm writing Namaste, the divine in me honors the divine in you. But you can write over the whole ball. I cover them with writing or designs, um, other rubber stamps, if you have something meaningful. Make sure you're Letter isn't clogged. The cornstarch is keeping the rubber stamp from sticking in the clay and so that it comes off easily. Now you can also take a pencil and you may want to just dip the point. You don't want the pencil point to be super sharp. You want it to be a little rounded because you don't want sharp edges. But you could dip it in there and then you could carve in your clay. Just go and make designs however you want. Okay now if you can see, that's carved now. It has little jagged things. When they're dry, they're gonna be hard and um, a little bit rough. So what you wanna do is let this dry enough that you don't want it to be, we call it leather hard. It's still soft enough that you can write in it and stamp in it, but it's not so soft that it's gonna like collapse and smear. So when it's that stage and you do your writing, you can just then take your finger with just the slightest bit of water on your fingertip and go over where those little pieces of clay come out and clean it up, okay? Then you need to let your 
your meditation ball dry. So depending on, of course, the humidity in the room or your house and how wet your clay is when you make it, it could take even up to a week to get it all the way dry. But a quick way is to put it out in the sun on a warm day. And once it's dry, you can just take your um, acrylic paints. You could use paint markers. You could even use watercolor for a very transparent look and add color to your ball. Or you could just leave it. Uh, the, it'll be a grayish white clay. So um, I hope that this is a healing activity for you and that you enjoy it. Namaste.